Eight Rules of Love by Jay Shetty Introduction Drawing from Hindu wisdom, Jay Shetty shares eight guidelines for practicing love in romantic relationships and beyond. Love is not about staging the perfect proposal or creating a perfect relationship. It's about learning to navigate the imperfections that are intrinsic to ourselves, our partners, and life itself. Romantic love is one of the most universally recognized concepts across time periods and cultures. In Western culture, countless movies and songs center on love, yet many people have difficulty pinpointing their own definition of love, which can lead to challenges in practicing it. Jay Shetty is a best-selling author, podcast host, and viral video creator who spent three years living as a Hindu monk. Innate Rules of Love Shetty draws from concepts in the Vedas, the ancient scriptures of Hinduism, to offer practical guidelines for approaching relationships. Shetty breaks love down into four stages. Solitude, compatibility, healing, and connection, and provides insights, exercises, and meditations for each phase. The four ashrams or stages are 1. Brahmacharya Ashram which involves preparing for love. 2. Grahastha Ashram, which is about practicing for love. 3. Vanaprastha Ashram, which involves protecting love. 4. Sanyasa Ashram, which is about perfecting love. The first stage of love. Solitude is an essential part of self-growth that allows you to have better relationships. In Hinduism, an ashram is a school for deep learning and growth. There are four stages of love, and we can think of each as a different ashram or classroom for life lessons. The first rule of love is to allow yourself to be alone. In the first stage, or ashram, we prepare ourselves for love in solitude by learning how to love ourselves first. Many of us are conditioned to associate being alone with loneliness. We would rather be in bad relationships than be single, we can reframe being alone as solitude, an important stage in self-growth. Don't be afraid of being single and focusing on yourself. Working on yourself means you can bring a whole self to a relationship rather than just a half. Solitude helps you recognize that there is a you before, a you during, and a you after every relationship, forging your own way even when you have company and love. Perform a solo audit. Keep track of the time you spend doing solo activities, not including time spent looking at screens or sleeping. Add one new solitary activity per week and embrace the time you spend pursuing your preferences, independent of others. Assess and learn from a past relationship. Pick a past relationship and reflect on the energy you were in when you started the relationship, like loneliness, passion, or goodness. Be honest with yourself about why it ended and learn from it, reflecting on what you would do differently next time round. The second stage of love. Sharing love with a partner means supporting them while also nurturing your own goals. The second rule of love is to learn from past relationships. Your impressions of the world influence your decisions, which create outcomes. Often, we pick up false impressions as children and then start acting these out on the world. If a person's parents guilt-tripped them growing up, they might act out this impression by guilt-tripping their romantic partners. When you start to identify the false impressions you acted out in the past relationships and their negative outcomes, you can break the cycle. Sharing love with a partner means supporting them while also nurturing your own goals. The second stage, or ashram, is practicing love, which means offering it to others while still loving yourself. The third rule of love is to define love for yourself before putting it into practice. When people say I love you in romantic relationships, they can mean different things. One might associate it with familial love more than romance. Be clear on your definition of love before you say it or express it in a relationship. Communicate with your partner to share your definition. Listen to theirs and agree on a shared meaning. The fourth rule of love is to think of your partner as your guru and yourself as your partner's guru. In ashrams, gurus are teachers who offer guidance and love without ego or judgment. 
Your job is not to impart wisdom to your partner, but to support them and their goals as best you can. It's essential to remove your own goals from the picture when supporting them. When deciding if you want to be in a relationship, assess if the person is someone you want to learn from and grow with. The fifth rule of love is that your purpose comes from your relationship. In Hinduism, Dharma is defined as your life purpose, the intersection of your unique talents with a need in the world. While there are ways to show your devotion to your partner through sacrifice, ultimately, you have to put your Dharma ahead of your partner. You can also support your partner by prioritizing their purpose. Your purpose has to come first for you, and your partner's purpose has to come first for them. Then you can come together with the positive energy and stability that come from pursuing your purposes. Ask if your partner is someone you can grow with. Do they like learning about themselves? Are they interested in understanding you? Do they support the growth of other people? A good partner doesn't have to check all boxes, but these questions can help you decide. Learn about your purpose. Reflect on your greatest passions, including hobbies you loved as a kid but no longer have time for. Then reflect on your roles at home and work and identify a list of strengths. Purpose is where passion intersects with skill. The third stage of love. Love means working through the challenges without ego. The third stage, or ashram, is protecting love through struggles. Think of this ashram as a peaceful place to find healing when working through relationship conflicts. The sixth rule of love is that one person can never win or lose an argument. You only win and lose as a team. Fights are healthy, but your goal shouldn't be to win. Every time one of you loses, you both lose. Every time the problem loses, you both win. Instead of defending your position, focus on turning the argument into a shared goal. If your partner is upset that you never clean up after yourself, offer to work together to create a routine for daily chores. Often, Fights are about a deeper issue than what's on the surface. Don't get stuck fighting about something you don't care about. Get to the root of the problem as quickly as possible. The seventh rule of love is that if you break up, you don't break as a person. Breakups are often tough, but remember you are still you after a relationship ends. Feeling pain after a breakup is natural, but don't shelter your feelings for too long. Instead, Work through your pain by reflecting on what you got right and wrong in the relationship. The fourth stage of love is perfecting love, where we learn to extend love beyond ourselves and partners to every person in the world. The eighth rule of love is to love over and over again. If you can live in service of others, always looking for ways to bring good into others' lives, you are constantly expressing love. We are connected, and when we serve others, we are serving ourselves. Identify ego and passion in conflicts. Write down the reason for a recent conflict and why it upset you. Identify your reason for fighting and see where ego or passion might be getting involved. If your answer involves improving the situation or your relationship, you're acting from the right place. Provide closure for yourself after a breakup. Write a list of things your ex did to cause you pain. Look at each action and be honest about who was responsible. If it was actually you, take responsibility and learn from the mistake. Read the letter aloud to an empty room and find closure. Write a letter to the world. Write a letter expressing your love and gratitude for all of humanity. This exercise can be a helpful reminder to operate this way with everyone you meet. Final Summary Romantic love is a balancing act between pursuing your own purpose and supporting your partner on their journey. The key to loving the most fully is taking your own ego out of the picture and learning to live in service.